Welcome to the podcast, Leading and Growing Your Real Estate Business by Coach James Short. This podcast is designed to help you with strategies, insights, and ways to increase sales, build and lead high-performing teams, and ultimately grow your business. Your host, James Short himself, also shares some of his secret sources on how he helps his own clients achieve business growth quickly and easily. James has been coaching those in the real estate and property industry for close to 10 years now, and his clients keep on saying, since working with James, their results have been outstanding, giving them more money, time, and fulfillment. James is offering a free strategy call to those listening to see how he can assist you to take your business to where you want to go. Simply go to jamesshort.com.au forward slash strategy and book in a time today. Now on with the show. Hi and welcome to another edition of Leading and Growing Your Real Estate Business. This is Coach James Short and welcome, welcome, welcome. We are truly honored and privileged to have these two next guests. These two are amazing human beings. We have Dennis Preston and Julie Bowden. Wow, from True Color People Solutions. Now let's have a little bit of a background because these guys are are true colors in themselves, very colorful people, but really here to help you business owners and leaders to take your business in relations to people to the next level. Now, Dennis was an NRL player with the Dragons and played 69 first grade games with over 200 grade games. His business UNAC marketed tax saving packages to professional sports players and had over 100,000 members. Dennis attended a financial services seminar in San Diego where he discovered a strategic people planning approach. Dr. Martin Seligman, oh, he's another guru, um, and Metropolitan Life presented on a system developed by Dr. Seligman that helped MetLife apply a hiring strategy that enabled them to hire 12,000, that's right, 12,000 of the right highly optimistic salespeople and in uh, just two years, take 50% of the personal insurance market. Wow, huge, right? The system resulted in UNAC employing another 200 highly optimistic and productive people over five years with exponentially increased UNAC productivity and profitability. After selling UNAC to AXA, Dennis went into business coaching, consultancy, and employed the system to help his private clients. Now get this, Mark Burris, that's right, was one of the first businesses to engage staff using strengths analysis to measure candidate subconscious strengths when Wizard Home Loans was established. Now, Julie Bowden joined Dennis and True Colors People Solutions was formed to help business owners take control and have more certainty with hiring. Now, True Colors People Solutions provides scientific recruiting where all candidates are profiled and compared against client selected best people or industry champions in all roles. If candidates match or exceed champion scores, they are put forward for an interview. Now, Small, medium-sized businesses that don't use recruiting agencies can have access to a hiring support platform, taking the guesswork and emotion, allowing them to compare candidates against industry champions. Now, I've used these platforms. I've used these guys' services time and time again. I'm a big champion of what they do, and a number of my clients that use them as well. Now, let's hear about Julie, because Julie's very special and what her motivations are and what really drives her. In 2001, as a director of nonprofit Magic Moments Foundation, Julie co-founded the Magic Moments Youth Leadership Program with no resources, no funding, just a burning desire to share with young people the strategies and tools that had changed our lives. It took 18 months to raise funds for 49 teenagers and 11 teachers to attend the Anthony Robbins Foundation Discovery Camp in San Diego in 2003. Each year, they raised funds to continue the journey and a partnership was formed between Magic Moments Foundation and the Anthony Robbins Foundation. Their vision was to have an Australian program that would be run for youth by youth. And in 2009, the first Australian youth leadership program was launched. The Magic Moments Foundation Youth Leadership and Business Summit now recognized as a world-class program run by youth for youth is held in Colorado, Sydney in the July school holidays and attracts young people from all over Australia and 11 countries worldwide. And up to 65% of young people attending are sponsored. It's an amazing program. Following year, the young people return as graduates and the pathway continues to train as youth leaders, leaders and coaches. Each year they're provided with life strategies and business, business skills by inspiring international and Australian presenters and take this information back to their schools and communities. 
And it's amazing as this year is the 10th anniversary of the program. Wow, so excited to have you guys onto the show today. Welcome and thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks for the opportunity, James. It's, it's great to be here. Yeah, it's great to catch up. Fantastic. Now, what a journey. I'm sure we could be here talking for hours, but we want to get straight to it because you guys have got so much valuable content that I love to hear from you. I'm going to start with you, Dennis. Like that time in San Diego when you're, when you're hearing Dr. Martin Seligman, what was that turning point for you? What was that aha moment where you go, wow, I can really see how this can help organizations? Yeah, it was. Uh, I'd been traveling every year across to conferences, and uh, when I saw Dr. Seligman on the agenda and the topic, um, MetLife had a failure rate with uh, new salespeople of something like 80%. Wow. And it was costing them about 30000 per candidate to train them up over two years. So, and they looked at putting on thousands of people a year, and I'd I just spent 15 years trying to find uh, accountants, lawyers, financial planners, insurance people in financial services that could cross over into the soft skills of uh, consulting and uh, selling and servicing. And uh, I think I'd probably hired upwards of three or 400 people over the previous 10 years And my failure rate was running at 70 and 80% too. And I thought, well, there must be some sort of secret here. And sure enough, after I understood the areas that uh, Dr. Seligman was measuring uh, and the results after two years of using the profiling system, uh, they'd reduced the failure rate down to 30%. So it dropped by 50%, which uh, equated to about... uh, somewhere near five or 6,000 people over two years that uh, were being retained. And um, the profile focused on key areas that I hadn't considered before, areas like how do you overcome short and long-term challenges? And in your world, how do you set and achieve all of your goals in all areas of your life? Mm -hmm. How do you raise optimism so that uh, there's a direct relationship in the profiles between highly optimistic and highly pessimistic people. And uh, Seligman's work is all about positive psychology where you can lift pessimists to become highly optimistic. So there's a whole series of things. So I, I bought the system and paid a lot of money for it and brought it back to Australia. And then I did a three year program online in positive psychology to be able to really understand why it worked and how it worked. And to cut a long story short, the first batch of people that I uh, profiled, 10 candidates, two of the people that applied were people that I normally wouldn't have hired. My own subconscious virtues and, and strengths and perceptions were different to these people. And so I took the risk and hired them and both of them were became superstars and in a year or two I'm, I'm looking at people differently altogether I stopped making assumptions that I could uh, I could really figure out consciously uh, who was the right people to interview and hire and I started relying totally uh, and what had taken me uh, I, I had 60 people that had taken me over 10 years to find in the first year we found about 40 people And then the next five years, we found over 200 and we had exponential growth because we had a fantastic J. Abraham's marketing system that was working with about 20 associations. And uh, so looking back on it, it changed my life because I stopped consciously trying to evaluate a person in an interview uh, to subconsciously identifying up to 21 strengths before we interviewed and before we knew it, we were having the right people to train. Training costs went down, productivity went up, profitability went up, and for the next 15 years, it was just amazing. Fantastic, <laughs> wow. So good, what a journey, what a journey. So, so Julie, who are, the types of, who are the types of businesses that you're helping at the moment? Because you guys have gone some, some strength to strength, and 
I know that you're working with a couple of our clients at the moment and they're having some great results, but who are the type of clients that you're working with at the moment and what are you noticing with, with them and, and where they went wrong in the past? I think it's um, the number one issue with most businesses is finding the right people. And I think the problem is because they haven't experienced having the right people, they don't really believe that these people exist. So they'll just take anyone. And if you have an advert, um, an advertisement for a fair salesperson, and you have 50, 60, 70, 80 resumes that are all roughly the same, how do you select? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we do find the people that are highly optimistic, highly productive, great communication style. So they're the sort of things we look for, but it works in all industries because the champions are from that industry. So we find the champions, we benchmark them, and then we just compare the candidates to the champions. And most people have, you know, some internal champions. If not, we've got, you know, industry standards that we can compare them to. And you'll find that when these people come in, they're, you know, what we call the, the A team, the A class people, they will only want to work with A class people. So they will attract more people. And it's, it's often difficult with the people doing the recruiting because if you've got mediocre people doing the recruiting, then they're going to attract similar sort of people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we work in all industries, financial services, uh, insurance, printing, timber industry, because we just take the champions from those industries. Yeah, Mark, yeah. Mark Burris had, uh, had a challenge in the uh, finance broking industry. He was finding good finance brokers but he was struggling to find people that could cross over into the soft skills, the sales, the service, the consultative sales roles. Uh, and that's kind of flowed into areas like accountants. We find BDM style accountants. We find BDM style lawyers. We find we're doing lots of work with vet surgeons and podiatrists and dentists. So it's the the, as, as Jules said, if we can identify a champion within a, a practice or a business, our commitment is to only send you candidates as good, if not better, than those champions. And ironically, if they don't have a champion, over the years now, we've got probably 30 or 40 different champions in all different roles inside different businesses. Even on the scale of a, a large international insurance broker, we've identify 30 champions in their structure. And if a candidate comes in, they just get compared against that champion and they can make a decision within five or 10 minutes after the profile has been done. Fantastic. Yes. I mean, that, huge savings of costs, huge savings of, of time. Um, just to really, as you said, Dennis, before, is take out the, the, the guessing competition. And as you said, Jules, is take out the mediocre kind of projection that for the, someone who's maybe doing the interviewing they're going to project on what they feel that they need for that role and it takes out the you've got a heartbeat good you're in um, <laughs> all those kinds of things which is which is amazing which which is what i love about you guys and, and what you guys do um let's get obviously let's share a little bit more about yourselves obviously there, there's been uh, some highs and some lows and obviously some challenges that you guys have come through the other side but have really shaped you and the and the business what have been some of those challenges that you've come through the other side? You look back and go, wow, I've learned a lot. What were some of those kinds of lessons that you learned? I think the fact that uh, because we're a bit different, um, you know, the recruiting industry doesn't have a particularly good name. And when we first developed this, we took it, we didn't want to do recruiting. We took it to 16 recruiting companies and asked if they'd do a joint venture with us because we could find the right people. Yeah. And they all used it to find their own salespeople but they didn't want to introduce it to their clients, unfortunately. So that was, you know, we thought they'd, they'd jump on it, but they didn't. So I think some of our challenges are, you know, if we can get in front of people and show them, you know, the value, they, they buy into it straight away. But because it's a bit different, then, you know, it's, that's, that's one of the issues, getting in front of people and, and letting them know. But it's, you know, you have to be persistent. One of the things in, if you've got a business, you, you know, you just keep on doing it. Because uh, that grows resilience and you have to be optimistic in, in business. Otherwise, you wouldn't be in business. So true. So true. And what about, what about some of the wins? You've had some great wins over the time. What are some of the, if you look back in, in the, the successes and the wins, you go, wow, that was, a, that was a great time or that was a turning point. What were some of those, those wins that you've had and, and lessons from that as well? 
I think probably the vets were one of the big wins. We, uh, we worked with a company, um, they, United Vets Group, and uh, they, they're coaches. So they go into vet businesses, into vet practices, and put in systems to allow them to um, succeed because vets often go in to business because you know they want to help animals and but they're not particularly good business people and so um united vets would go in and put in the systems to enable them to be good vets and do what they love doing because part of our premise with the um uh, profiles is if you work to your strengths you'll enjoy what you do if you enjoy what you do you'll do more of it and you'll you'll create the success and give the things you don't like doing to other people that, that enjoy doing that and it, this, they were looking for something like this because vets would employ people, they're high kinesthetics. So if they felt sorry for someone, they'd employ them. Yeah. <laughs> so this takes all the emotion out. So they look at the scores and they only employ those people that match the scores. So they loved it. They, they were really excited about it. That's so good. That's so good. And, and the accountants, we have an accountant that um, she's increased her turnover by, uh, we've put in about eight, 10 people in there. Yeah. Wow. Including the BDM, and she's increased her turnover by a million dollars, and she's tripled her profits. Yeah, yeah the, the fascinating thing is that um, when you say so with the vets, um, they're hiring people in remote areas, trying to attract people from the cities to go into remote areas. So we encourage them to profile the candidates first. Mm -hmm. So they can, they can compare with someone strong or a champion in their own, own practice. And it takes all, as you say, the guesswork out of it. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many opportunities for it. Um, we, uh, we work with lots of different coaches as well around Australia. And it's a pleasure, obviously, working with you because uh, we come from an NLP background as well. And I've extended into the positive psychology areas where we can help people grow the scores. If um, we don't necessarily go into a business and then uh, we do what's called a team audit and if there's low scores in particular areas we work with yourself as the coach to say well how can we go about lifting the productivity. Uh, we don't actually do the coaching anymore so we work closely with the coaches and it actually gives you a laser focused look at the subconscious behaviours and uh, it helps the coaches dramatically to uh, go deeper into where the people are having challenges and we help them out. So true, so true. And let's talk, let's talk about leaders at the moment because I know you've done some amazing work with some and benchmarked some incredible leaders out there. And what are you finding out in, I, don't know, I would say all the different industries that you've worked with, what makes up a, what makes up a great leader and where do you find most business owners fall down in relations to their leadership? It's got to start with self-leadership. There has to be, you know, development, personal development, you know, and, and work on yourself as a leader and walk your talk. You know, so many leaders um, tell other people what to do, but then they don't walk their talk. Yeah. And, um, you know, inspire rather than drive. You know, if someone is inspiring you, then of course you're going to want to do more and, and set big goals, you know, um, and, and part of um, being a leader is recognizing and appreciating the people that you have, that you're working with. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's a big part of it, of, of being a leader. Yeah, fantastic. Mm. What, about, what about teams? I mean, <laughs> you've, you've worked with some great teams, you've developed some great teams, um, both for clients and also yourselves. What, what do you think makes up a, a championship or, or a winning team? And where do you think a lot of business owners fall short in relations to developing these championship teams? I think you have to invest in the right people. That's the number one, because there's no point investing in people if they're not going to take you where you want to go. It's, you know, it's a crossover. And you know, share your mission and vision. If you don't have one, then create one, because people are inspired by that. And connect purpose and meaning to each of the roles. I remember doing a Tony Robbins course years ago, and in each of your the wheel we did and each of those areas you gave yourself a role and um it's powerful mm -hmm. you know if you've got someone that's a clerk as opposed to a mover and shaker you know give people a title there was a, there's a great story um i went to um 
seminar and a guy that uh, used to work for Disney um, was speaking, I can't remember his name, but he walked into a Disney hotel and he said the receptionist just blew him away. He said she was amazing. So he actually contacted the general manager and said, I want to compliment you on your receptionist. She was just amazing. He said, we don't have a receptionist working here. And he said, the girl on the front desk. He said, no, she's the director of first impressions. <laughs> Who wouldn't want to have a title like that? I mean, it's Very fun. nice, exactly. So, yeah, and I think it's, um, you know, it's sure your team is working to their strengths mm. because um, you know, that relates to productivity. Engagement relates to productivity. So if you've got people that are, that are working to their strengths, they're going to buzz. The whole office is going to buzz. But if they're doing things they don't enjoy, mm -hmm. they're going to be reluctant doing it and you're not going to get the same sort of buzz. Yeah, so true. So the true. The, the fascinating thing, uh, James, as well about leadership is that um, we, we help uh, leaders identify all their subconscious strengths and uh, that creates the opportunity for them to decide what roles or what uh, application they need to make inside their own businesses to bring about the best outcomes. And from your point of view, it identifies uh, areas that need to be upskilled for them to really excel as a high performer or a peak performer. Uh, this, the same applies to all of their managers because we are able to uh, identify the strengths of the managers, if there's any areas where there's low to medium scores, we can then recommend how to raise people's performances on particular areas that are holding them back. Because we're talking about subconscious drivers or limiting beliefs that are embedded in their subconscious. And we need to identify it first and then see how to go about lifting it and improving it. That's what, that's what, sorry, go on, Jules. That is recognizing that your strengths, you know, you're amazing. You're like CEO, we've had CEOs and that have, their profiles haven't been that great. And they've recognized that, that they shouldn't be leading. So they surround themselves with much higher level people that are going to take the business because they can't do that themselves. Yeah. So that's another thing, recognizing your own strengths and that you might not be the person to lead the business. And that's what I love because it provides a whole career succession plan. It's a development plan. So if you've, if you've found someone, and even as you said, Dennis, before, it may not be the person that you actually thought it would be, and you can have then a development plan based from what you guys do, is then you go, okay, these are the areas of this first section that we're gonna work on. Then we'll work on this. And then we'll, so you're actually developing the person as a whole in relation to their strengths, rather than just the technical component. Because everyone can teach technical of push a button here and, and do, a, do a thing yeah. there. But when it comes to the human behavior, when it comes to, as you said, the, the limiting beliefs and tapping into that subconscious shift, this is where you can really take someone on a, an amazing journey through their career, which is, which is a, a beautiful gift to offer someone, isn't it really? Yeah, absolutely. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Uh, there was a uh, situation with uh, a client just in the last week where we were able to identify that uh, one of the clients was, uh, wasn't motivated because he had stagnated in terms, he'd had a, a rapid uh, growth in his role and had done exceptionally well and he'd been promoted, but he got there and, and he just started to stagnate. So we've identified that he's, goal setting and we call it uh, achieving good and great events in your life. And um, we identified that that was a low score and uh, it'll be an area he now needs coaching uh, from your point of view uh, to lift him to the next level. But the problem is when people don't know how to do that, he could have stayed in that stagnated state for the next year, two years, five years. And it couldn't change his career and his life. Well, we've been able to identify where the next strengths need to be developed and uh, pass it on to you and then uh, it'll change his career. And that happens all the time. That happens all the time. And you can see it's, a, it's, a, it's a really like a sliding doors approach, isn't it? If, the, if, if When they do do it, they'll just go, when they don't do it, they'll go a different direction. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a really a great way to really, as I said, 
advance that person, no matter if they may be stuck or actually don't know that they're stuck, to have those tools and techniques to really take them to, to another level. So if you were to give if you were to give three pieces of advice to to business owners and business leaders out there, um, what would those three pieces of advice be to help them grow their business? I think um, to focus on the mission and the vision, you know, where do you want to take the business, help others succeed. Because if you can help others succeed, you're going to succeed. And be kind to yourself and others. You know, don't sweat the small stuff. Yeah. So they're, they're the three. Yeah. Uh, one thing that came out of the early discussions we had there is I love the idea you're hiring or the potential of the person that you want to promote, you need to understand them consciously and subconsciously and so we need to educate more and more owners of businesses, entrepreneurs, managers, in why is the full picture, the conscious plus the subconscious, uh, and why is it so important? And, and it's not difficult. It's, uh, it can be, as you know, it can be uh, uh, reading a chapter in a book or doing a short course or a bit of, bit of training and coaching. So true. Uh, Love it. So what's coming up for you guys? What's, what's on the horizon um, in the next little while to, to mid to long term? What's, have you got any projects or what's, what are some of the things that you guys are working on? We're in the process of creating an app, which is called Magnify. And sure. it's about magnifying your strengths. And uh, that's um, the first um, stage of that is the app. So you just log in and you can do the, um, the profile survey and you'll get all the, um, all the scores on your phone. And we're also creating a book that will go with that, that will say, you know, if, you're, if your optimism level is X, you know, is five, and you want to increase that, then these are some ideas of what you can do. So it's about, um, you know, repetitive um, behavior, 30, 60, 90 times a day. So you create those new neural networks. So instead of jumping into pessimism, you'll jump into optimism and find solutions. And it will increase productivity, explains all about communication styles. So that, that's going to go with the app. Wow. <laughs> just, just a few little things on the go. <laughs> yes, <I do. laughs> well, there's another exciting area that um, because of Zoom, I've fallen in love with Zoom because I'm a kinesthetic visual. So my uh, conscious way of behaving with meeting people was always face to face. But now I love the idea. And we've been, we just uh, placed a, uh, a timber mill manager from Johannesburg in a uh, timber mill in Taree, uh, <laughs> and it was all done with three or four Zoom interviews. Wow. And we've changed the life. We get a lot of satisfaction out of, of helping people achieve their goals in life. And uh, this chap wanted to leave South Africa, and he's now looking at moving his family to Taree, which, as you know, right on the coast, a beautiful part of the world. Wow. And we're also doing a similar thing with a large coaching group in uh, Swin, Swinbourne in London, uh, who specialise with uh, vet surgeons. Uh, we've uh, been working with so, over 300 practices here in Australia, so he knows our experiences can complement his. And we're looking forward to maybe doing more of that uh, around the world. <laughs> just a couple of things on the go i love it i love it <laughs> so where can where can the listeners where can the tribe find more details where can you send them what what can they read where can where can they go well they can just come through to us uh jewels at truecolorspeoplesolutions.com.au or if they urgently want to call us um 0406 488 and if anyone has teenagers and wants to look at the Magic Moments Foundation, that's magicmoments.org.au. So share us a little bit more around that, Jules, in relation to the Magic Moments Foundation. I mean, it's such an important thing that you're doing with the youth of today. Like that is just a, a beautiful project. I mean, what a, an amazing journey. And you would have seen some incredible shifts and, and advances with these youths today. Just share a little, little, a little bit about that with us so we can really grasp the, the power of this program. 
So we cover, um, we cover everything to do with leadership and uh, we cover lots of things that um, are not covered in school and that, you know, kids are dealing with these days, you know, like cutting and, um, you know, bullying. Um, and they're given strategies to actually deal with it. But not just that, they have a peer group. We have a private Facebook page, and which is where they share things and get advice from, from their peers. And it's not just a five-day event. We have uh, 40 days of challenges after the event. And then there are monthly or fortnightly um, webinars, Zoom webinars, where the young people themselves actually put on presentations. And it will be, you know, how to deal with stress at exam time. We teach at camp um, property investing, share trading, how to create a business and sustain a business. And in their teams, they have to come up with a business idea, marketing plan, and they present that to the room. The, winnings, the winners are judged, the, the teams are judged, and the winner, winning team will get a, a business coach. And it's opened up to the room. So if anyone's got a burning desire to join in and create that business, they can. That's and cool. it, there's a natural attrition that gets down to you know, about six, eight, ten people. And when we know they're serious, they get prize money of $1,000 wow. to set up the business. And we've had lots of success. We had a young guy that came to us two years ago uh, at 15, wanted to be involved, came back the following year. He started his own business last year at 16. This year, he's just completed a roadshow around Australia. So it's Youth Leadership Academy <laughs> Australia. Oh. We've had kids go and, you know, one young guy went and bought his first property. Wow. And then he came back. He, he didn't come back the second year. He came back. No, sorry. He didn't come back the third year because he's actually at uni, but he's got other jobs. And he came back and he's bought his second property. I've heard he's about by his third. He teaches kids how to do that on Zoom. That's so amazing. it is. And we've had young people that have written books. They've gone back and raised money for communities it's just they're incredible they're incredible love it. love it oh fantastic well it's an honor and privilege to have you both on the show today really thank you for your time thank you for your expertise and your knowledge and um definitely go out and and, and check check all the information out there for the listeners today true colors people solutions dennis and jules really thank you very much for today thank you james really Thanks, appreciate james. it thank Great you to uh, chat with you again